Hello again, so Robert Centeno here, co-founder to TGT, The Guys Tech. So we are primarily a computer consulting company where we do all types of, uh, you know, we offer advice, we do personal shopping assistance, full repairs, builds, from home to business, all the networking, everything related to technology, we can take care of it. We operate with uh, near New York City, so all five boroughs and parts of Westchester as well. So the last talk that we had, it kind of went on long, so I'll try to keep this one as short as I possibly can. But we were talking about micro center and computer retail in general and how it's really important to focus on employees. This time around, we're going to talk about how to provide the best customer service, because if you are focused, if you're going to be saying that you are the best of the best, um, how do we actually provide the best customer service and keep customers for life. It's one thing to tell your employees that it's one thing to have your mission statement and your hedgehog and your your goals and the gear and all that wonderful stuff. But like I said, if you have a team of employees where 70% of them don't really care or don't really see anything from uh, for themselves, none of that stuff is going to really matter. And that ties into being able to provide the best customer service. So right over here on my desktop, we're going to be looking at a, an article from uh, Trader. It's about Trader Joe's, which is uh, a great, a very successful grocery store. It's been around since the 1950s. And right here, this article, we have former CEO John Shields who was talking about a, a few different things that they've done to remain in business. But one of the key things that he talks about to continuing to be at the top after all these years, despite all the different grocery stores, all the different competitors, is employee retention, is keeping your employees. That is the most important thing because when you have a customer come to your store, you want to connect with that customer, right? The customer talks with whatever salesperson they get and they form that kind of relationship and a bond and trust hopefully over time. So if your company is folk, doesn't really care about employee retention too much and people leave every six months to a year, every two years or what have you, and the customers come back and there's a whole team of new people, that seriously hurts. Um, customer for life and customer loyalty because then that whole relationship is completely terminated. But when you have a store full of veterans, full of people who've been working for the company or your company so long that all your employees know the inner workings of the company, the system, the store, all the products, where the products are, when we can't find the products, we know exactly where to go or where to look to find those products to get the customer in and out and give the best experience, not an okay experience, the best experience. Because in this type of world, there's always going to be another company that's going to rise up and try to be the best. We've seen Tops, we've seen CompUSA, Computer City, Circuit City, um, all these companies no longer exist, but at one point they were the place to be and no one thought they were going anywhere. It's the same thing now with Best Buy. Best Buy is still restructuring. Some of the stores have downsized. Um, it's not the same as it was before. They had to close about 120 stores. So you have to make sure that you don't focus on how much money can we save today? How much money can we save at the end of the year? You need to be thinking about how we can remain the best for the rest of time until we blow this planet up, <laughs> because that's what it seems like is gonna happen. And uh, customer service and employee treatment, the way you treat your employees are directly connected. Because as I said before, if you have employees that just don't really care and they don't see anything for themselves, it's going to be that much harder for them to provide customers with the service that they deserve. If you have employees that have to get a second job, uh, they're working in micro center full time, 80 hours, you know, 70, 80 hours 
they have no full days off they don't have time for themselves they don't have time to enjoy time with their family their friends or have a life you don't get the rest that you need you're frustrated you, all the stuff that you have to deal with in the store is going to seem worse and worse and worse when you're not being compensated the way that you deserve and uh, as that last example i talked about one of the managers who was handling three different departments for the longest time and he was only supposed to be handling one department okay and they never gave him a raise they never really came in and, and told him good job great we're gonna pay you more what they did instead is they hired somebody else who had zero experience in the other area that they were placed in and something like that totally destroys morale and it doesn't push your employee to give the best customer service okay they are just working just because they don't have a choice just because they need a paycheck and this is not something you want and you can't blame the employees you can't blame the employees because the theft is so high because people don't care uh, that they're not doing their job you have to look at why does this keep happening because at this store that we are talking about at Yonkers uh, and it can't be the only store that this is happening in because there are other stores where that are in very very uh, bad shape um, you have to ask yourself why does this keep happening why are we not moving forward as quickly as we want to uh, why are we not doing as well as we can it all boils down to the employees and customer service man you need a lot of patience to deal with some of these fucking maniacs that come into the store. We've had customers, I mean, I've been in retail for really like over 22 years and I have had seen, I've seen customers uh, throw shit at people, attempt to shoot, stab uh, co-workers, slash tires, threaten lives, right? Um, the, the things that people do and think that they could get away with. You got people that come into the store and think that they can act like a maniac or an animal and this is going to push the store associates to want to help them. The stuff that people do, the stuff that comes out of customers' mouths is insane. And you have to ask yourself, you know, when you're an employee, are you being compensated? Like, is it worth dealing with the possibility that in some cases your life can be in danger because we really have no way of knowing the mental state of the full extent of what certain people can do. You turn on the news all the time and you see all this insane stuff happening all over the place. Multiple, there was a shooting at Best Buy a number of years ago in Kingston. A guy just ran into the store with the machine gun. And you just never know what could happen, you know. Especially in the Yonkers location, not the greatest area because the, the types of customers that come in, it's a reason why the theft is so high because they are not far from a really nasty area. And as an employee, you're going to be thinking about all these things, thinking about is it worth it? Um, and it can really, really affect how your workers uh, treat the customer and also affect the theft. It gets worse or how can it get better? Yeah, I always felt, just to throw it out there, I always felt that a better location for Micro Center in Yonkers uh, would have been the Ridge Hill uh, location. It's a much classier, much better area for an upscale computer store. And even though they have the Apple Store there, um, there's lots of things that the Micro Center Knowledge Bar tech support do that the Apple Store will not do for their customers. So it's still a great way. Uh, uh, you can still be successful, be in a much better area. The traffic is much better, and the people that go to Ridge Hill spend money. Um, it's not really the case in the Yonkers location. I was very surprised because the Circuit City that was there before that, you know, they were in really, really bad shape. I don't think that reopening that location and creating it into a different computer uh, store was the best decision. But again, when you want to provide the best customer service, you have to continue to focus on your employees. Uh, when you have employees that don't need to get a second job and have two full days off and can spend time with their family, friends, get the rest that they need, and then come back to work completely rejuvenated, um, it makes a world 
of a difference for your entire company. So thanks again for watching. And uh, just remember that uh, before we before we go, um, you know, when dealing with customers, I, I do want to say one more thing that I learned years ago when I was uh, 18 years old. I used to work for a uh, computer store in New York City called RCS Computer Experience, you know, and um, I'll never forget. I had a really bad experience with a customer who the, the part of the store was under construction. And uh, this guy was so angry that we couldn't refund him on something that he took a two by four and he started swinging at me and my coworker and security had to come jump on the guy. And later on, the owner of the store, great, great guy. Uh, his name was Elliot Tabelli. He had a couple of brothers. They ran the whole store. It was a great, great, great owners. And um, later on, he came over to me and, and uh, you know, he asked me how I was doing. And I, I really appreciated that. And he said to me, um, how, how did I feel when the guy came at me, you know? And, and, you know, I was young at the time and I said, oh, the guy is an effing idiot and, you know, he should have been shot or taken away or whatever, uh, whatever stupid, you know, other thing I had said. And he told me something. He said, Rob, you know, when you see people react this way, you never know what it is that they are going through in their life, okay? Now, I'm not trying to justify these ridiculous actions. I'm not trying to say, oh, at that point, it's okay for you to stab me. Mr. Customer, please slip my throat. Please slash my tires. I totally understand you. It's okay. I'm not saying that. But when you see somebody, whether it's in your family or a customer, or if you're a customer and you have a nasty experience with an employee, you have to ask yourself, what is going on in this person's life for them to be reacting this way? Because you never really know what someone has gone through or what, or what they are going through now. You know, one woman that I was talking to years ago was being really nasty, calling, cursing at me. And I was very nice the entire time, never raised my voice. I kept apologizing to her, even though she was calling me all these ridiculous names. At the end of the conversation, she could not believe that I remained nice. And she broke down crying and she told me that her husband just passed away in a car accident just two days before. And it made me feel hor you know, horrible. And I, I was very glad that I, was, that I remained very nice to her. But that's just an example of what I'm talking about. You never know what's going on in someone's life. And when you sign up to do customer service or retail, that's just part of, you have to accept that that's just part of what you're gonna have to deal with. You're gonna have to deal with nasty people. Don't go scratching your head saying, I don't understand customers, don't, don't bother, because you never will. That's just part of the job. But just keep in mind that when you're dealing with people in general, whether you're an employee or a customer and, you're, and someone is just ridiculously out of line, just keep in mind that most likely something is not right. And it doesn't excuse their actions, but it may help you to be a little bit more patient and understanding the next time you come across a situation like that.